Let's do a buffer example, uh, one with a base as the primary uh, component. And uh, we're going to use a, a compound called hydroxylamine. Uh, hydroxylamine uh, is a base. We know that because A, it's an amine. B, it's a nitrogen-containing compound, as you see right here. And uh, the third thing that tells you that it's a base is that it's got a pKb. So all of those things point to it being a base. So we can imagine what would happen if we put this base into water. It would, uh, it would dissociate by reacting with the water, and the nitrogen's lone pair would uh, gladly attack a proton, and we'd end up with this HNO3 plus and OH minus, because the base is going to produce for us the OH minus. So now that we know that, uh, we find that a solution has been made that contains some of this uh, hydroxylamine with a concentration of 0.271. And then another substance, this unknown, unnamed nitrate compound with a concentration of 0.217 molar. So if we look carefully at the nitrate compound, here's the nitrate. This other stuff has to have a charge of plus 1 because the nitrate's got a minus 1. And you should identify substances that have, you know, Cl minus or I minus or Br minus or uh, OCl or ClO4 minus um, and even NO3 minus. These are substances that are made from a strong acid. So this, this is a salt here that's made from a strong acid. Uh, so uh, this is going to completely dissociate. We can imagine it dissociating into its two parts. And lo and behold, if we look carefully, we can see now the common ion. So just to summarize what we have, we have a container that we put these two substances in, and they have a common ion, and that's exactly what a buffer is. So now we can go ahead and solve this. It's not that hard of a problem now that we've identified what's in there and what we need to write as our equilibrium. So let's go on and do that. Very quickly, uh, when you write one of these equilibriums, you're going to write it for the neutral species, for the acid or the base, not the conjugate acid or conjugate base that you have. So the neutral species in this case is the hydroxylamine. And once again, I, I've redrawn that with the Lewis, uh, with the, uh, in the Lewis form so we can see the uh, two electrons attacking the hydrogen on the, uh, the proton, I'm sorry, on the water. And I've built an ice table. Uh, we put in our initial amounts, 0.271 and 0.217. There is no hydroxide to begin with. And because of this, Q is equal to 0, and we're going to shift to the right. You need to keep writing that down and showing that work. You just can't let it slide. That has to be shown. If it's going to shift to the right then, we're going to use up some of the hydroxylamine, make some of this um, cation here, make some hydroxide. And then we just add those up to get the 0.271 minus x, the 0.217 plus x, and the x. Now, we were given the pKb, not the Kb. And to undo a log, which is what a p is, the p function is a log, we've got to do a 10 to the operation. So that's what I've done here. I've actually uh, found the Kb by just raising uh, the pKb to the 10 to the minus of that power. So. Uh, it comes out to be 9.12 times 10 to the minus 10. And it's quite often that people will show their, um, their KBs in this form as a pKB. Well, to solve this, it's real simple. Uh, we put together our uh, equilibrium expression. And when we do that, we find that we can, and you want to write this down as an approximation, we can simplify this. It's definitely going to be easy to do with 10 to the minus 10th. We can simplify that these x's, as they're compared to a large number, 0.217 or 271 can be ignored. And when we do that, then we get a very simple calculation, which gives us x as uh, 1.139 times 10 to the minus 9th. Good news is x is related to the hydroxide. We see it right here. x is the hydroxide concentration. And therefore, we can find the pOH very quickly. And from that, we can immediately get the pH.